In this video, I'm going to give you all the reasons why I think you should buy the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 Mixer. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Dr. McFarland. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe down below and click that bell. And if you're just searching around YouTube trying to learn more about the PreSonus Studio Live Mixer, then you've come to a great place because I have a whole series just on this board itself. But in this video, we're going to try to answer the question, should you buy the PreSonus Studio Live Mixer? So let's go over some of the features and let's figure it out. So first of all, the Series 3 Mixer from PreSonus is a huge upgrade from the classic version that was released many years ago. And on this one, we actually have flying faders. We have a nice big touch screen and we have an updated fat channel with vintage style EQs, compressors, and you can even add more EQs and compressors to this board. So just that alone saves you tons of money of having to buy outboard gear, such as EQs and compressors. And in the fat channel, it already has a gate. So you can have total control over the audio going in and out of this board. So if you've never worked with flying faders before, you are in for a real treat. So let me show you some of the things that you can do. So let's say you have a certain mix on your drums and you wanna move over to another group of tracks. All you have to do is just hit a button, then all the faders move according to what they were last located at. So let's make a little mix right here. And we can flip back and forth between these tracks and the next set of tracks, which is really, really cool. And you actually have up to eight stereo pairs that you can assign tracks to and you can make these aux mixes sub mixes or a matrix mix which allows you to go a little bit deeper into the routing of this board now with the main channel assignments you do have a phase invert and a 48 volt phantom power and you also have the option to send any track to the main output as well as a subgroup and it's also very cool that you can link different channels together. So I have one and two linked together. So if I move fader one, you can see that both faders move at the same time. And let's say you want to send some audio from your computer to the board. You can assign a track via USB. And now you can have this fader be a click track coming back from your doll. Maybe you want your YouTube audio playing back on a certain channel or just any other sound that you have coming from the computer you can route that out of the computer back into the board and do a full mix just like you would a live band right there in front of you another great thing about this board is the built-in effects so we have four different slots we can assign effects to effects a can be a digital reverb or we also have a vintage plate reverb, mono delays, stereo delay, ping pong delay, chorus, and a flanger. So let's just say effects A, we want it to be a chorus. Why not? Effects B, we can have that be a vintage plate reverb. Effects C is going to be our stereo delay. And then effects D is going to be a mono delay. So now you can flip back and forth. You can choose whatever effect you want and now use the faders as your sends for that effect. So there's your main mix right there and there's the level of your effect A. If you go to effect D, you can bring those faders up, make those however hot you want, and now you're back to your main mix. If you scroll over with the previous and next, you can see another 16 channels on this board. And even though this board only has 16 inputs, you can add another 16 inputs via an outboard box that is available through PreSonus. So that is really, really cool. So on the last page, you can see our master faders for those effect groups right here. Then you also see the auxiliary inputs one and two, as well as the tape in and the talkback mic. All right, the next really cool feature about this board is having a user layer. And what that means is if you have a set of tracks that you need access to really quickly and that you use all the time, then all you have to do is just hit the user and there's some tracks right here. So for me, I use my electronic drum kit all the time. So I have a fader for that. I have a click track fader that comes out of the DAW that I'm using. I have a computer fader 
that plays back audio from Spotify, YouTube, whatever else outputs out of the computer. Then I have my DAW return, which is the fader that controls the volume of my digital audio workstation. So you can easily flip back and forth between your main mix right here, then always go back to your user right here. And once again, I have other videos showing more in depth how to set all this up. So be sure to check the rest of this playlist so you can learn more about these special features. But this is more of an overview video. So the aux mixes on the side here, we can make those subgroups. As you can see, I have a subgroup right here. So when I choose subgroup one, I have the faders for that subgroup show up and everything else is down and muted. Mix two over here shows just the faders for that mix. And we also have the mix effects masters. So here's my subgroups right here and the rest of the aux mixes, as well as my sub outputs A through D and my FX masters on the other page. Okay, we also have DCA groups, which is a great way to use one fader and control the volume of multiple faders at one time. So if I choose DCA one, you can see that here's my DCA group over here. And when I move this fader up and down, the rest of the faders move in relation to this one fader, which is great. So that's slightly different from an aux mix, and I do have a video on that as well. There are tons of inputs and outputs on the back of this board. And like I said, you have 16 total inputs for your mic or line inputs, as well as auxiliary ends for a keyboard or maybe a record machine or even an electronic drum kit. And for every aux mix or subgroup, you also have separate outputs that you can assign to send out to a floor wedge on stage or maybe even a headphone mix. So the last feature we're gonna talk about is actually storing different mixes as scenes or projects on the board. So if you hit the scenes button right here, you can see we have projects and we have scenes. So for example, I have a Saturday night project, which is the name of a certain gig on a Saturday night. And I have three different bands called up. So the first band is Mongoose. And I can quickly recall that mix. And there you go. There's the mix for the first band. It'll, it'll save all the fat channel settings as well. And then we can go to the next band, hit recall, and then there you go. And now we have the last band. So you can store as many different projects or scenes within those projects as you want and then also back them up on your computer for safekeeping whenever you need to get back to them. So that's just a great way to utilize the flying fader aspect of this board and take total control of your mix and get back to it whenever you need to. So pretty much all the boards in this series are over $2,000. But if you look on the used market, like on Amazon, or even an open box or demo version on Sweetwater, you can probably find these for around $1,500 to $2,000, especially for the 16 version that I have. And this one is discontinued, so you may have to look for a good deal online. But if you're in the market for a great all-around board that you can use to record a full band in the studio or mix multiple bands on stage, then I would highly suggest looking into the PreSonus Studio Live family of mixers or even take it for a test drive at your local dealer. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And in the meantime, I'm Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.